Hello guys, my name is Philip and I'm going to talk to you about C Sharp 5, the new CTP and async in action. You can read about me on my website which is www.philipekberg.se or you can contact me at my email which is mail at philipekberg.se. You can also follow me on Twitter. So this cast is going to be about giving you an idea of what async can do for your application. I'm going to introduce you to the syntax and I'm going to give you some hints and resources that you can use if you want to know more about what happens behind the scenes and what the compiler generates for you. After this I'm going to give you a demonstration of how, do you, can how you can create a respons responsive application using the new async features. So mainly async can give you a responsive UI. We've been able to do this before using threads and background workers, but th that code is not maintainable in the long term. It makes a lot of noise in our applications. We want to create as to create as much functionality as possible. This is where async comes into the to the game. It's easier to gasp, it's easier for developers to create maintainable code and less noise in your applications. Because what async does is that it really wraps some, some things up. It's going to generate a lot of code that you had to write before to, to create the same behavior. We'll get into more of that later. So there are two new keywords that you need to be aware of when using the the new async features. These keywords are await and async. Basically the async keyword is what you declare your method as. You declare a method as asynchronous uh, and you say that this, this method is, has the possibility to run something or being run in the background. A method that, that's declared async needs to either return void task or task of t. And when you want to wait for something to happen or more clearly you want to tell the, the the system that all right this methods need th this method need to run in the background so I'm going to await this and come back to this later. That's when you use the wait keyword. If you want to read more about what happens behind the scenes and what the compiler generates for you I truly recommend you reading John Skeet's blog. He's an excellent developer and he's written a lot of uh, things about what what the async will generate for you at compile time. So I'm going to show you a quick demo of what happens when you use async keyword in the C-sharp CTP and how you can create a responsive UI with this. So what I've done here is uh, I've just added a solution and I'm going to add a project to this which is going to be a WPF application. I'm going to name this async demo and to make this easy I'm not going to write any SAML I'm just going to write everything down in my code here. So what I want to do is that I want to add a button and I want to add a, a list box because when I press the button I want to populate the list box um, and when I press the button I want to call some time consu consuming operation that I want to later convert to run in the background to make my UI a bit more responsive. So this is the, the code that I'm using here. I've added a button and a list box and the basic idea is that if we look at the user interface is that when I press this button I want to populate this list box and the thing is that often when you you try to populate something like a grid view or list box or something like that you call a quite time consuming operation. It could be fetching all orders from a web service or fetching all users from a database and a lot of times you have the data locally on your network but a lot of times you don't. So if I press this button, uh, we're going to go into the calculation method here because our click event handler calls that method and I'm going to add it to the user interface. 
So this freezes up the user interface. It's going to sleep for about three seconds and then print out the, the result there. So I like to make this asynchronous. If I were to do this the old way, I'd add a, um, a background worker or a task that I run on a thread and I'm, I'd use a dispatcher to invoke the method that I want to run on the use UI thread, G UI thread. So I don't want to do that because that's going to leave a lot of noise in my application. So what I want to do is that I'm going to create a task of this. I'm going to create a calculation task. I'm going to use task.factory.startNew and I'm going to add these things into my calculation task. And what I need to do now is that I need to uh, change this, this return type to uh, task of int instead because this will return an integer for me. And I need to, to mark this method as asynchronous. So far so good, right? So what do I return here? How do I get the value from a task? Basically, this is a task of, of int. And to, to strip this of the surrounding task, you use the, the new await keyword. So I could do int result is equal to await for my cal calculation task. This would give me the result here. Notice that I, I return my result here uh, as an integer, but it takes a task of integer. That's because we need to notify this application that something is running in the background. So if I were to run this application, it prints out that it's a task. That's because this method returns returns the calculation task for us. It returns what, what we are currently doing because we don't have the value when, we re when we're returning. Here's why you need to go to John Skeet's blog and read more about what happens at compile time. The wait keyword will create something that's called a continuation. So, so everything after here will be a continuation. And nothing below this part will be run before this, this task is completed. So what I need to do here is to do the same thing, really, that I did up here. I need to mark my method as asynchronous. I'm going to move this out here to make it a bit more clean. And I'm going to say that, all right, I expect a task of integer. And what I'll do here to get the result is that I'm going to do int data is equal to await for my calculation task. And then I'm going to add this to my user interface. So what happens here, uh, if you remember that I just said that all things that happens after this is a continuation. Everything after wait is a continuation and will run after the task is completed. So what happens here is that we fire off a task. We say, all right, I'm going to wait for this task. We return a task and say, all right, we have a task here. I'll wait for it and come back here when this task has finished processing my data. So if I run this application now, It's responsive, and there's the 10. To see a little bit more about what really happens here, so I'm going to add a couple of more add data to UI.
So uh, what's going to happen here now is that I run the application. I suspect that if, if we just analyze the code before running this, we come to get data, it's going to add get my data, it's going to going to calculate, write out calculate star, it's going to write out calculate await, it's going to go back up here, write out calculate start, and after that it's going to write out calculate end, and then it's going to come back up here and write get my data end. So get my data. And there it is. Get my data start. Calculate start. It's awaiting for my calculation task. It's awaiting for my calculating calculation task in my get data method. The calculation has ended. We print out the results. And get my data method is finished. So what we did here was that we, we got a responsive UI and we did it in minimal code. So this is why I think the asynchronous features in the new C-sharp CTP is really, really important to us. Thank you guys for listening to my, to my cast here and I hope you've learned something or just refreshed your mind on these parts. If you have any questions, please contact me and I hope to see you guys soon again.